Hey guys, how you doing? We're live from Big Dog Tackle. Trey West, aka DJ Ice Trey. Chris, Wahoo Slayer Thomas today. So today, uh, we went out at a 14th Street Causeway over the boat ramp. We're back now by 9.30. Uh, we left early and uh, I had been talking to Chris for a couple of weeks about going planer fishing and we're gonna catch a Wahoo. Kept telling me, yeah, I don't believe in planer fishing. Never so works. I'm gonna pass it over to him and let him tell you what he thinks after today. Well, I'm a believer now. I, can't, I still can't believe we, we just pulled a wahoo off a Bonita strip on a planer. I've never caught a fish on a planer in my life. And I said, I, I told him, I said, it doesn't work. I fish tournaments. I only use live bait. I'm not gonna fish a planer. He brought me out. I'm a believer. I cannot believe how simple it was. So we're going to show you exactly what we did today. It's so easy and uh, there's no reason we can't do it every weekend. So I'm going to have Trey go over the spread, what we use, especially the planer rod. I've fished planers before and haven't got anything. It's so simple. The tackle they have is simple. So we're going to go over the terminal tackle for that right now for you guys. So Trey, the, the planer setup with the bridle, for me, that's a game changer. It was so easy in line you don't have to hand mine anything you can reel the fish up to the rod so definitely explain that how that works yes and for those of you that don't know chris has been fishing his whole life i don't know 30 years 40 years <laughs> about to get taking it easy on him but he's been fishing his whole life fishing tournaments big boats small boats all kinds of boats you can see now we fish the 23 contender we went out today and the seas were a little choppy it was probably three to four rollers and uh, it handled it no problem. So this time of year, the seas get a little unpredictable. So having a couple guys out there to work the boat, drive the boat, work the cockpit, set the rods, it's ideal. Um, so what we did today is we went very basic. And for everybody out there, you don't have to be an expert fisherman to go fishing for Wahoo. Very basic, three rods we set up. The first rod we put in the water was a planer rod. So you gotta go with a little bit beefier tackle because the planer puts a lot of drag on the reel. So today we have an 80, which is really overkill, but you know, it's just an old rod I had. You know, you see I got this broomstick. It gets a nice bend in it when we set the planer. But this 80, you can use a 50, you can use a 30, but you definitely want something a little beefier. And I'm running a number eight planer. So it's it goes based on the size of the lead that brings the weight down. So as you can see, this planer, I'll jump right into it, it has double snap swivels on each side. And on one side, the barb is cut off. And that's on both sides of the planer. So the barb cut off and sanded down is used to connect into this bridle, which has two heavy swivels, one at each end. So this is actually run in line with your tackle. So you run braid, a top shot, 200 yards of braid, from your reel, you run a bimini twist knot, you tie that directly to this open end of this bridle. And then on the other end, you run 80 feet of mono. 60 pound or 80 pound, whatever you prefer, but you want a nice tight knot that'll run through the roller guide on your rod. So what you do is you have this in line, you have 80 feet of mono, you let your, your bait out and then you just simply connect this swivel, the snap right into the heavy swivel, the open eye where the braid is. So what you have to do is you have to be very careful not to put the, the swivel through the braid part, the snap through the braid, because then you'll destroy the, the leader and you'll probably lose all your tackle. So you just have to be careful, make sure you get it in the hole. Okay, so just to go back to the planer rod and reel, you set it up, you can have mono, whatever kind of line you want on the bottom, but you really ideally want 65 pound braid on a top shot of about 200 yards. 
So the reason for the braid is that there's no stretch. There's no stretch in the line. So that is gonna go directly to our bridle, which the planer will be connected to the bridle. So if you do wanna set the planer or release the planer, you can use it a lot easier with braid. If you have mono on top, you can still work with that, but you'll probably have to stop the boat to reel the line in if you wanna move. So we get to the bridle, the planer. Some people like to use fluorocarbon. I use mono, 60 pound or 80 pound mono to the bait. And so what is our bait? Today we simply used a double hook setup with a little mylar skirt with a four inch squid skirt and then a simple sea witch with a little bit of mylar on it and of course you can set this up with whatever color whatever skirt you want but it's a nice presentation and the last step to this process is putting a nice thin bonita strip that's been well brined and salted so a lot of people that come into the store at big dog tackle they only want the shiny silver Bonita strips. But I have news for you, it doesn't matter. Today, we got our Wahoo on this sexy Bonita strip. So you see the thin Bonita strips have a lot more action to them. So when they're in the water, they look more like a swimmer. So I'm gonna show you if you haven't put a Bonita strip on before, the easy way to make it look nice and presentable. So what you do is you have two hooks. You hold the hooks in your hand and you just measure the Bonita strip to where that's the top hook will fit perfect there. And then you mark where the bottom hook's gonna land with your thumb. Then I take that last hook and I come right through the meat, the meat of the strip. We come right through. So now it's right there and you see that this top hook toggles very easily so you can just very simply punch a hole right there and now you have a very sexy swimming bonita strip and all said and done this is exactly what it looks like right here that's what it's going to look like coming through the water shiny pink and white gets tight so I've had a lot of success on the pink and white. Also, the blue and white works very well. A lot of people love the blue and white. And then a lot of people like the dark colors, like the purple and blacks, the red and blacks. So it's gonna be totally up to you and your preference. So if I fish pink and white all the time, I'm gonna catch fish on pink and white. If I don't fish purple and black, I'm not gonna catch a fish if I'm not fishing. So just something simple. So that's our planer setup, very basic. You don't have to buy thousand uh, dollar setup if you have an old uh, pen 60 laying around with a nice rod but the key is the roller tip because all the pressure from the planer is going to be on the roller tip if you have a lighter rod you can just simply go with a lighter planer maybe a number four or a number three and what i always say is let's just keep it simple if you want just start out with one rod in the water practice your planer and then move up put a second line on top so, as I hope you today, very simple. One planer rod, um, it was getting hit five minutes in the, into this red. Smaller fish were hitting it, but we caught a Spanish mackerel. We had some, I think, small tunas hitting it. Um, and that trip's really easy. And I think the key is it hold this, the whole situation is this bridle where you don't have to hand line anything. You're going to see on the video the bridle, the, the planer comes right off with this bridle. He reels the fish all the way into the tip, and I get the gaff and pull it all over the rail. There's no line on the deck. It's not messy. It's very easy, very simple. Um, and all this is here. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's all prefabricated if you want. You can make it your own. We're showing you how to make it. Very simple. And we had three lines out. So that was the, the our bottom bait, our planer bait. And on the top, we just had value. 
Regular trolling rods. What kind of rod and reel do we have over there? This is the basic Star TLD 25. Nothing fancy here. Nothing fancy. Basic, basic. You don't need a million dollar boat or a thousand dollars in tackle to do what we did today. Yeah, and that combo right there, you know, you don't need anything more than the TLD 20 or 25 for top baits for trolling. You know, those things are bulletproof. I have uh, combos that I've had for 25 years. So on our top baits, what I like to do is either use, I put a, I just simply put a squid skirt on top of a ballyhoo. I like to use the wire on the ballyhoo. I just feel more confident that if I get a bite, I'll be okay. So I just simply feed the skirt over that. And there's my pink and white setup. And now you got your ballyhoo. He's been out in the sun a little bit, so he's losing his uh, groove, but uh, this guy was in the water earlier and it, we literally went through, in two hours, we went through two packs of ballyhoo and we went through, we started on our second pack of strips. We had a couple of these guys get sliced up. They were either mackerel or kingfish or maybe even a barracuda. And then we finally got our, our, our wahoo bite was, how deep were we? Right at about 280, we were going between 200, 300 when we were really focusing on the Wahoo. Um, hit strong, the, the rod trip, the, the planer trip, and you could see the, he was, he was shaking. Trey knew, I never caught a fish on a planer. I knew nothing about it. He's like, that's a fish. I'm like, okay, we'll find out. And he was right, nice fish. Yeah. Nice fish. Yeah, so sometimes you get a knockdown and it's a smaller fish. And the planer, what happens is the rod, when the planer's on there, it puts pressure on the rod, so you gotta bend in the rod. As soon as a fish hits the planer, the planer releases and it pops, and then the rod bends again. However, when your planer is out, your line is at a 40 to 45 degree. Typically, that's where I like it, because it's going to the planer. Once you trip, once the planer gets hit by a fish, the line at the other end pulls the planer and it rises to the surface. However, if it's a good sized fish like the Wahoo we caught today, the planer tripped, but the Wahoo has good size to it, so the line actually stayed down for a while until we got him closer to the boat. So with, I think, I think one of the big keys to planer fishing is when you get a hit on the planer, don't throw the boat in neutral. Leave the boat in gear, let it keep going. I mean, we kept it almost at the same speed we were trolling. I think you might have pulled it back a hair. Just a hair, and we weren't going fast. We weren't high speed trolling, guys. We were, I was at 1,500 RPMs. We were dancing between six to seven miles an hour. We were just trolling. We weren't high speed, high speed trolling. We were just trolling with a planer. Yep. What a difference that made. Yep. And so when you're reeling in a fish, especially on heavy tackle, a lot of people get excited and you have that tendency to try to crank them in and force them in. What I did today, because I have lost fish, I think we've all lost fish doing different uh, tactics. So what I did is I kind of felt the fish. As soon as the fish gets on the line, I know there's a fish, I kind of back off the drag just a hair because the drag is super tight on an 80 with a planer pulling that drag. You'll see once you get out there. So I backed off the drag, I took it easy, the boat's in gear, the fish is tight. The key is to keep the fish tight. So we keep the boat in gear. He might have backed off a hair, so we might have been doing five miles an hour. But we kept it in gear the whole time. I kept it in the, in the rod holder. I was reeling, cranking. He wanted to run, so we ran a little bit. I let him run. I just, it's a, it's a game of time. You know, he's, I got all day. So we reel him in, reel him in, get him close. And when the boat's moving, the fish is coming up next to the boat. He's swimming next to the boat. So I pick the rod out of the rod holder in the back corner, and I walk to the front of the boat. Why do I do that? So that Chris can go unclip the planer off of the bridle. So once he does that, I can keep reeling all the way to the fish. All the way to the fish, game changer. Yeah. So as I'm reeling to the, get to the, the fish sees the boat, he wants to take off again. He runs, he tries to go under the boat. I hold the rod away from the boat to keep him out of the motor. And then we get him back on track, get him right next to the boat. And Chris, what'd you see? I saw a big striper right <laughs> out of the boat, ready to go. Um, and that was the first time I gaffed a fish under power, off of a planer. How was it gaffing the fish? I mean, different than just drifting as opposed to drifting. 
Yeah, you can't see as much. You just see the angle of the line going down. Trey's like, gap? I'm like, okay. I did aim a little further forward because we are under power and when the gap hits the water, it did pull it back a little bit. So I aimed really forward. So that swing would bring it to the fish. Came over the rail. Along with the boat. Bigger than what we thought it was going to be. It was bigger than what we thought it was going to be. It was a nice fish. So that's pretty much it. So one thing we pride ourselves on over here at Big Dog Tackle is that we encourage customers, if you got a setup, bring it in. We'll help you get it rigged up. We, we make the bridles in-house. We make them. They come with the snap swivels already sanded down, ready to go. And then also we have the double hook rigs. These are the super strongs in case you do get a big wahoo. You don't want the hook to bend out. And then all the skirts, all the sea witches, the bonita strips, everything. Everything here costs less than a dozen gogs. And that's all I fish with are gogs. I can't believe it. I mean, there's nothing here is expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. So that's it. Fantastic. So now we want to show you the payoff. Yeah, let's see what happens. Let's see what's in the bag. So this is what we got in a couple hours of fishing right outside of Boca Inlet. We left out of Hillsboro. And there's our dinner for tonight. All right, guys, good luck out there fishing. Tight lines.